Field. Welcome into McKee Field at Hayden Park for the second game of the Joe Nuxall Classic this afternoon. In the first game, it was Wright State against Cincinnati. The Raiders taking that one by the slimmest of margins, a 7-6 decision over the Bearcats. And now here in game two, it's the Xavier Musketeers taking on the Miami Redhawks. Good evening, everybody. I'm Paul Frenchner alongside Reed Mouse. We have Casey McAllister over to our left also here on the production side. And this is how the Xavier Musketeers will line it up this afternoon. It's a fairly familiar one. Jack Housinger is leading off for the Musketeers. Matthew Dupre is batting second. Andrew Walker bats third. Tyler DiMartino bats fourth. Matt McCormick bats fifth. Carter Hendrickson bats sixth. Garrett Schultz is in the seventh spot. Jared Cushing is down there in the eighth spot. Second on the team and homers in the eighth spot. And Luke Hammond gets the start at third. Getting ready to go a few minutes early this evening. First pitch originally slated for 6 p.m., but we are set to go. Five minutes before the hour with Carson Byers on the mound. He delivers the first pitch to Jack Housinger at 5.55, and we are underway. Carson Byers comes in with an 11.17 ERA, 19 innings pitched on the season, 29 strikeouts, 22 walks. They really like him because his competitive nature, the true freshman, um, two-way player, but man, they really like just how much of a bulldog he is out there on the, on the mound and waiting for some success to come his way. Byers has housing in an 0-2 hold and fires in the game's first ball, a fastball low and away off the plate. Housinger right now hitting just 188, the Big East preseason player of the year. We'll talk about more as the game goes along. Housinger stays alive, one and two. Struggling this year, he'd be the first to tell you, but Coach Billy O'Connor has liked the quality of at-bats from Housinger this year. Just hasn't really had the stats to back them up. Made some good contact, just hit into some outs. The one, two. That one drifts outside, two balls and two strikes. Xavier in those road blues, the navy tops with the gray pants, the 2-2. Miami, snazzy look there in the pinstripe whites. White script across the chest. White, the red script rather, the red numbers. Red Caps. 2-2. Two -two. David Novak wanted it behind the plate, and Reed here in just a second after this pitch will talk about who was out there in the field. David Novak behind the plate in a payoff pitch incoming to Jack Housinger. Musketeers leadoff batter. And it's up and in, it's a leadoff walk. The Musketeers have a base runner aboard. And who is out there in the field now, Reed, for Miami? Yeah, let's take you through the defensive alignment for the Red Hawks in the battery with Carson Byers. You already mentioned him, David Novak, first team selection for uh, the Mid-American Conference a season ago. Out at first base, Parker Lester, Dylan Baker is getting the start at second. Cooper Weiss and Evan Applewick on the left side of the infield. Brian Zapp. Dom Magliaca and Zach McDonald out in the pasture for Miami. Matthew Dupre lays a bunt down the third baseline. Here is Applewick to throw to first in time. One down in this top of the first inning. Dupre doing his job getting the lead runner over there into scoring position. Small ball, Paul. Breaking it out, Billy O'Connor never afraid to put the bunt sign on. And the first inning has been so important for Miami. Not a whole lot of success this season, but a lot of it has been as a result of giving up crooked numbers in that first inning. They can hang a zero. They like their chances. Andrew Walker batting here, then Tyler DiMartino on deck. Matt McCormick to follow. DiMartino back into the lineup for the Musketeers here recently. Finally played against Michigan after being hurt for much of the season. There goes the runner, Housinger. Great jump to third, the throw down, not in time. Yeah. Housinger steals his fourth base of the season. Yeah, great jump by Housinger and a 
Good strike and throw from Novak. Just Applewick didn't slap the tag on him in time. And look at the Musketeers threatening here in the top of the first. Andrew Walker hits this one into left center field. Brian Zapp from left will settle under it. Housinger tagging from third. Zapp has his throw cut off, and the Musketeers have manufactured a run. It's 1-0 to begin the game. Two down in the top of the first. Yeah, more of the same for Miami this season. Just have yet to hang a goose egg up in that first inning, especially in these midweek games. A couple weeks ago, they're playing Wright State. They give up five runs in the first inning and battle all the way back, but it's just sometimes it's too much to always be trailing from behind. And here's Tyler DiMartino. Talked about him being back in the lineup. Hitting 298 this year. This is his 13th game. Xavier's 29th game overall. Musketeers have won six in a row. DiMartino with six homers on the season. And it's tied with Matt McCormick, who hits one spot behind him. Third on the team in homers. And he's played in half the games. Less than half, really. And it's as if Byers knows that, falling behind 3-0. And you mentioned six straight wins for Xavier. Playing at the right time, you know, you're getting into the, the thick of things in the Big East starting this weekend. Really like the way they're playing going into that. Yeah, no doubt about it. The Big East season, as anybody would tell you, the most important time of the year for this Xavier team. They've apparently played very well in conference play. This one fouled back. Count running full. Big East championship game appearances in each of the last two seasons, but... Both of them have resulted the same way. Losses to the University of Connecticut. Payoff pitch to DiMartino. And it's lined to short. Diving play made by Cooper Weiss to end the inning. Musketeers get a run, but Weiss hits the web gem. And we'll head to the bottom of the first Miami to the plate after this on Chatterbox Sports. Bottom of the first inning here from McKee Field at Hayden Park, campus of Miami University. Musketeers get a run in the top half of the inning, and now for the bottom half of the inning, we'll see the Red Hawks for the first time. Reed, who will we see? Brian Zapp getting the leadoff spot against the right-handed pitcher. Lefty only plays against right-handed pitchers. Cooper Weiss in the two-hole. Shortstop, you saw that fantastic play he made in the top half of the inning. David Novak working his way up the lineup, the First team Mac selection a season ago, finally getting his bat going. Ryland Zaborowski, 11 home runs on the season. He's in the cleanup spot. Parker Lester's batting fifth. He's over at first base. Zach McDonald working his way down the lineup. He's out in right field. Dom Magliaca getting the start in center field. He's batting seventh. Dylan Baker will be batting eighth. He's at second base. And Evan Applewick, always a tough out, anchoring this lineup. He's batting ninth. And all of them will face Luke Hoskins on the mound for Xavier, making his sixth start of the season, the tall right-hander. I'll tell you more about him in just a second as he fires in a first-pitch ball, low and outside. Hoskins, the sophomore, ERA at 6.37. 92 on the gun, 91 on the second fastball, so low 90s on that fastball on that heater. Colorado native. Ten appearances last year in a Xavier uniform. Got a 
work back from a 2-0 count here against Brian Zapp. Hitting 266 this year. Zapp swings over the top of it. Zapp getting on base 46% of the time. Yeah, far and away the leader on this team in the starting lineup. A 2-2. Two -two. Tap to the backstop. Next closest down in the five spot, Zach McDonald make it the six spot. McDonald getting on at a 431 clip. That's not near the 460. 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, when you're batting 266 and your OPS is right around one at 960 as Zaps is, you can just tell tough out. And he only exclusively bats against right-handed pitching, but he's a tough out. Fastball outside. Zapp has started now 21 games in the 29th game of the season for Miami. And there's a cold strike three inner half of the plate and a 3-2 count. Got him looking, and it's the first strikeout of the day for Luke Hoskins, 27th strikeout of the young season. Yeah, just right there on the inside half, 91 miles an hour just froze Zapp. Was thinking breaking ball all the way. Saw something straight, couldn't react in time. First pitch is low and outside. That skips through the dirt to Cooper Weiss. Comes back again, and now the first two hitters for Luke Hoskins. He's fallen behind, 2-0. and oh. Game two of the Joe Nuxall Classic. Winner to face Wright State next week. Check swing. He went around, says the first base umpire. That's Jeff Spisak down there. Scott Wyckoff is behind the plate. John Molesky is at third. David Novak to follow. High chopper out to second. Cushing having to charge. This is will be close to throw to first. Beats out Weiss by a step. Two down. Yeah, we talked about it in game one today. You play on this turf as both these teams, I mean, obviously Miami's home field and Hayden Field for Xavier's turf. You get used to these high yeah. chopping balls, something that you don't grow up playing with, but a nice job by Cushing coming up, realizing he has to get rid of it quickly and delivering a strike over to first. Two down for David Novak, hitting 274. It's a wave and a miss there. Again, the walk number is low for... Luke Hoskins, just nine walks through over 30 innings pitch now. Ground ball out to short. Housinger waiting on it. Throw to first. Automatic for the Musketeers senior. And we'll head to the second. It's one nothing Xavier. Neither team with a hit. Musketeers manufactured that run. We'll be back after this. Back for the top of the second inning here on Chatterbox Sports. Again, Joe Nuxall Classic being played. The winner of this game will face Wright State next week, who beat UC earlier this afternoon. Close game, went back and forth. Wright State falling behind in that game in the second inning. Wright State jumped, or rather, Wright State jumped out in front, one nothing in the second inning. UC responded to take the lead. They had a 3-1 lead into the bottom of the fifth, but from there, Wright State posted two in the bottom of the fifth, four more in the seventh. UC had one run each in the fifth through the eighth innings, but they could not score in the eighth. 
Cincinnati threatened, had two men in scoring position, tying run at third, go-ahead run at second. They stranded them and went down in order in the top half of the ninth. Wright State earning the win, and now it's Xavier trying to win their seventh game in a row. Miami trying to win their eighth game overall on the season, 7-22 and 22 right now. Xavier at 16-12. and 12. First pitch is inside to Matt McCormick. Reed, you were talking about playing well at the right time for Xavier right now, and I think you hit the nail on the head talking about going into the conference season. This is not a Xavier team that's really ever contending for a at-large berth, but the self-awareness to know that you go out, you challenge yourself in the non-conference season, mm -hmm. you play teams like Oregon, play some SEC teams, and it builds you for that Big East season. Count now at 2-1. and one. To a point where you can go and challenge for a Big East title year in and year out. Musketeers have done that. Made the Big East tournament year in and year out. Consistent players there as McCormick fouls that one into the glove of Novak. They yeah. know they need to win the conference tournament to get in. Right. It's it's kind of the catch-22 of playing that non-conference schedule. You, you play teams that are tough realizing that one of two things are happening here. You're either going to win these games – and actually put yourself on the map to to potentially get in the tournament if you if you play well in the conference. But more more often than not, you're just getting ready. You're getting battle tested, as they say, before you head into Big East play. Really trying to make make a run at winning the tournament overall. A called strike three to Matt McCormick. Musketeers without a hit in this game, but they do have a run. One nothing here in the top of the second for Carter Hendrickson. Yeah, Musketeers right now 29th in the RPI, but still a lot of time for the RPI to balance itself out as the rest of the season goes on. But you have a conversation with this Musketeer coaching staff. They'll tell you that all the time. You just got to do what you can, put yourself in the best position to make the postseason. They try to do that by challenging themselves in the non-conference. Here's the 1-0, check swing. That was a really good pitch there from Carson Byers. Gets his first strike out of the game. Now mixing up the speeds. Hendrickson, a newer face here for the Musketeers this year. Standing right on top of the plate. High chopper to third. That's foul. But Byers is ahead, one and two. Now you mentioned change in speeds. Byers has a really sharp slider that he likes to throw at pretty much any point of the at-bat. You saw the changeup right there. As a lefty, he has a three-pitch mix, and with a right-hander at the plate, has this changeup that kind of tails away. You saw it dive down in the dirt at the last second and mix in between that 76-mile-an-hour changeup, that 75-mile-an-hour slider, and the 90-mile-an-hour fastball is going to be crucial for him if he wants to go deep in this. Hendrickson waves and misses over the top of that one. Nice sequencing from Byers. Mixing up the speeds like you talk about, Reed, and completely off guard there was Hendrickson. And there's two down. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is that wasn't the first time he threw that changeup in that at-bat. It really already showed him, showed Hendrickson or that, that changeup earlier, and that bat came right back with something hard and then went right back to the well, tailing away from Hendrickson, diving down in the dirt and just waving over top of it. Hey, here's Garrett Schultz. Driven in 17 on the season. He's played in 17 of the teams, or rather 27 of the team's 28 games coming into today. This is a pretty consistent lineup for Xavier for the most part. Lots of home runs in that lineup. Lots of home runs, as we talked about earlier today from Hayden Field down there at Xavier. Boy, he's finding a lot of confidence in that changeup right now against these right-handed batters. Going to it on 1-0 to get that swinging strike. Knew that Schultz was going to be eager to hit. Ground ball past third, and that's fair, but it hits the umpire. That saves extra bases for Miami. The Red Hawks catch a huge break. Hit the leg of John Molesky down the third base line and bounce back to the shortstop, Cooper Weiss. It's just a single for Garrett Schultz. Yeah, saved by the grace of the third base umpire, right? 
Went back to the changeup, went right down the line. And just got saved of extra bases. Check over to first. Garrett Schultz, the second most stolen bases in this starting lineup, but just with four. Xavier doesn't steal a ton. They're very selective. Luke Hammond waiting in the on-deck circle, sophomore. A couple of underclassmen here in this starting lineup today. Otherwise, mainly seniors. Six of the nine are seniors in this Xavier starting nine. A read. Carson Byers again falling behind 2-0. Having to work his way back. Now 3-0. The one run in this game for Xavier it was the leadoff walk to Housinger. Got the second on the sack bunt. Stole third. Scored on the sack fly. That is what you call manufacturing a run. Here's the 3-0. That finds the zone. Yeah, just struggling. I know he found the zone right there, but still just struggling to find it after going to the stretch. He kind of got in a groove working out of the windup and now having to, to go and slide step and worrying about the runner on first base. It can sometimes jar a, jar a pitcher's mental break. Yeah, that's two looks over to first now. Another check to first. The third one of this plate appearance. Jared Cushing second on the team with seven homers. Three one. Byers finds himself in a full count. Garrett Schultz will be on the move. Payoff. Swing and a miss. He went back to the changeup. What a pitch on the outside part of the plate. Might have even been ball four, but Cushing couldn't lay off. We're through an inning and a half. Xavier has a 1-0 lead, but just one hit. We'll be back for the bottom of the second. Red Hawks to the plate after this. Back for the bottom of the second inning. Here from the campus of Miami University, and it is the Red Hawks playing here this evening against the Xavier Musketeers, part of game two today of the Joe Nuxall Classic. Ryland Zamorowski strolls on up to the plate with Parker Lester and Zach McDonald to follow. Luke Hoskins worked a one, two, three first inning for the Musketeers, and now he hits Zaborowski on the first pitch, ran too far inside. That's the ninth batter that he's hit this season in just over 30 innings. Yeah, ran too far inside. Luckily, he didn't run a little farther inside, or Zaborowski would have been having a really bad day. <laughs> yeah. But Parker Lester comes to the plate. This is a guy who, you know, we saw the shift – implemented a lot. You see out in center field, Schultz moving to left center field gap. That's the way Parker Lester likes to hit. If he puts it up in the air, he's going to send it to the opposite field. It's one nothing Xavier in the bottom of the second. Well, 
lot of real estate out there. Even Reed on a ball to straightaway center. Yeah, Parker's constantly working left side of the field. Ground ball right side. Cushing to second for one. Housinger to first of four, six, three. Taylor main double play. And there's two down in the second. Yeah, you can't draw it up much better than that. Right to the second baseman, Cushing, and an easy 4-6-3 double play negates the, the leadoff base runner. And that's what the doctor orders if you're Hoskins. You make a mistake, and then you roll one up the next bit yeah. better. Zach McDonald now hitting 280 on the season, but again, getting on base at a 431 clip. He's walked 22 times. That's the second most in this starting lineup. And he's slugging 570, second best on the team. That's behind Ryland Zaborowski, was hit by a pitch to start this inning. Yeah, but struggling at the plate right now over the past few series, only two hits dating all the way back to March 21st. Just two for his last 21. So trying to find it back from after a hot start to the year. Swings over the top of that one. Two balls and two strikes. McDonald probably only trailing Zaborowski has. And a cold strike three, a fastball on the outer half of the plate, and that ends the inning. Faces the minimum, does Hoskins, and we're going to head to the third. It's 1-0 Xavier on Chatterbox Sports. It's the top of the third inning here from McKee Field at Hayden Park. Xavier leads it one to nothing, and in for the play-by-play -play of the next three, it's Reed Mouse. Thanks, Paul. If you're new to Chatterbox Sports, go ahead, subscribe, like the stream, comment, make a little community here. It's the top of the third inning here in Oxford. Winner goes on to play Wright State. Loser will play their respective rival. Both these teams are rivals of the University of Cincinnati. 1-0 our score, 9-1-2 due up for Xavier against Carson Byers. Only one hit through the first two frames. Luke Hammond steps up, batting 308 on the season, just his fourth start on the year. Four hits and 13 at-bats. Two extra base hits in his four hits. Red-shirted last season. Went to Indian Hill High School as he takes the first pitch on the outside. Byers, we saw that change up. Speaking a certain language last inning. Let's see if he can find the fastball in the slider as well as he misses up and in, 2-0. and On the other point you made, Reed, was how well he was pitching before he had to pitch out at the stretch. Works with a lot of pace out there. and That's one of the reasons that this Coaching staff really likes Byers as a true freshman. You know, was listed as the second best pitcher as a senior in high school up in the state of Michigan last year. But he just competes out there on the rubber. 2-1 to Hammond is fouled over the first base dugout, 2-2. Two and two. Hammond awaits the 2-2. Two -two. Change up, fouled over the first base dugout. 
Still sitting in there at 77, that fastball coming in around 88, 89, so 12 miles an hour difference between the fastball and the changeup. Goes back to the heater on the 2-2, and Hammond sticking around. Hammond has struck out four times in 13 at-bats this season. Starting third baseman awaits the 2-2. Flared out to right field. Zach McDonald's underneath it. Right against the warning track for the first out. A good contact there the other way, but positioned well. Zach McDonald only had to take a few steps back to his left. Make that catch. One down. First time through the order. Only one hit for Xavier. Carson Byers has done a very good job limiting Xavier's ability to String together base hits. Yeah, two base runners, the first being Jack Housinger, who's up at the plate right now. Walked, came around, and scored. Byers has had degrees of success this year. Struggled against Wright State in the start a couple weeks ago. Gave up six earned runs over five innings pitched. Kind of jackal and hide out there at times Carson Byers is. One and one's the count to the starting shortstop. Halsinger awaits the 1-1. One -one. Lefty on lefty matchup as the 88 mile an hour fastball misses upstairs. You mentioned only batting 188 this season. A downgrade from how he's been in years past, but still getting on base about 32% of the time. 2-1, misses upstairs. Slight shift to the right side of the field. Dylan Baker playing second base. And Cooper Weiss shifted towards the middle part of the field as Housinger got all of this one <laughs> but hit it about 300 feet foul. Hard to be much more out in front than Housinger was right there. And back on the – that was on an 88-mile-an-hour fastball. So the 3-2 from Byers. Changeup gets Housinger to wave. And that's the second out of the inning. That's number – 39 strikeouts for Housinger this year. Yeah, and that's the fourth strikeout for Carson Byers going again to the changeup. And as I always say, Reed, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right now, it is most certainly not broken. He has almost given up the slider. We saw that a lot in the first inning, but exclusively going fastball changeup. As you see, the change piece gets deprayed. A foul tip one into David Novak's glove for the first strike. Byers gets the sign, working with pace once again, changes speeds up to the heater, rides it up and in, it's 0-2, and you see him dancing around the mound. He's a maniac out there. 0-2 <laughs> from the south, Paul. Tries the fastball up and in. According to the trackman, that had the zone. But the trackman is not calling balls and strikes. That's Scott Wyckoff. 1-2. Dupre sacrificed himself last time. Sits on that change up 2-2. Two and two. Winfield playing back. Carson Byers is making me nervous just sitting up here. He builds a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 2-2. Two, two. Lined out to right center field and going back against the wall. This has a chance as it rattles up against the bottom of the fence. It's a double for Dupre. A good piece of hitting there from Matt Dupre going to the opposite field, splitting the gap, one of the deepest parts of the park. Finally got that pitch to hit, and you know that's going to be frustrating for Carson Byers, who thought he was out of the inning a couple of pitches earlier on that pitch that, according to the track man, was in the zone. So he got all over the fastball, sent it out to right center field, and that might be it for Carson Byers. And we're going to see a new arm. So we'll step aside here in the top half of the third inning. There's a runner on second base and two away. We'll be right back on Love and Honor Live.
Welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park. It's the top of the third inning, and Connor Price will end to relieve Carson Byers. Carson Byers went two and one third inning pitched, but he is still on the hook for a run out there at second base. Price will on the season. This will be his seventh appearance. He's got a 9.39 ERA, has gone seven and two thirds innings, has struck out nine, and has walked eight. And I'll tell you what, Miami for the Joe Nuxall Classic got the memo. You got to throw left handers as they go to a southpaw <laughs> once again. Though they have used the young left-handers, not the old left-handers. Another freshman, Carson Byers first, and now Connor Price. They'll be facing off against the middle of this Musketeer lineup. Andrew Walker. Going to retire Walker and get in the dugout. And Xavier with just two hits. They've threatened in both innings, scored that run. In the top of the first, now here in the top of the third. The runner on second, courtesy of that Matthew Dupre gapper. To knock out Carson Byers, who only threw 56 pitches. 34 were strikes. You got to imagine they're going to use him this weekend and just try to get him some work. Maybe get him for a couple innings this weekend. Connor Price will toe in the rubber. And I, I'll tell you what, Paul. You and I, we got to rethink our hairstyles as Priceil <laughs> has the right idea. Blonde hair just like you and I, just get the mullet going. I'm getting a haircut tomorrow, so do we lean into the mullet thing? In all actuality, how long do you think it'd take you to grow hair that long? My hair does not grow very fast. It would probably take me a good year to get it anywhere close to that, I maybe, maybe longer. I can tell you right now that – my days of being able to grow hair that long are probably done. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get that far. I don't think it's going to grow that, that long. 1-0 the count to Andrew Walker. He flew out to left field his first time. <laughs> Priceil comes set, closes himself off to the left-handed swinger. 85 miles an hour on the gun. 2-0 is the count. You see more and more pitchers closing themselves off, stepping at batters. Saw this trend hit the MLB about a decade ago, and it's making its way through the youths as the 2-0 is fouled towards Miami's dugout, 2-1. Left-handed swinging Walker. At the plate, shifting over towards the right side, and Cooper Weiss having to keep tabs on Dupre. Swinging strike on the fastball. Two and two. Now Evan Applewick taking a few extra steps. The starting third baseman for Miami away from the line. Price will come set. Goes off speed. And it's fouled back. Priceil from Sagamore Hills, Ohio. Graduate of Holy Name was Holy Name's Athlete of the Year a year ago. Two-sport athlete, played football. And obviously here on the diamond as he plunks Walker, puts runners on first and second with two away. And, you know, that's frustrating for Priceil because he had him there in a 2-2 count. And now instead you put two runners on base for one of the Musketeers' most dangerous hitters. Tyler D. Martino. Six home runs on the season, 12 RBIs, batting 298 coming into this one. You mentioned it. Only 13 starts this year. And third on the team in Jacks. Chrysler misses downstairs, so falling behind the cleanup hitter for the Musketeers. Novak working in unison with Chrysler. Outs at any base here with two away and runners on first and second. Outfield playing straight up against the right-handed hitter. As Priceil comes back to make it 1-1. Good mix of right-handed hitters and left-handed hitters in Xavier's lineup all throughout 
going back and forth as Price Hill gets Demartino to chase. That's a pitch that Demartino really likes to hit. Price Hill once again comes set. Here's the one two to the designated hitter. Chopped out to Cooper Weiss, who's going to have to come in on the run, throw it on the run across the diamond. Parker Lester stretches just in time for the third out. We head to the bottom half of the third. It's one nothing here on Love and Honor Live. Welcome back to Oxford, Ohio, bottom half of the third, and you just saw the skipper for the Musketeers <laughs> taking the warm-up pitches from Hoskins. Catcher at Elder High School, A-10 player of the year back in his days, a transfer from Indiana to Xavier. Ooh, uh, Muskie, who, or Hoosier Muskie. Uh, Hoosier Muskie himself, Billy O'Connor. and Tell you what, he can't ever take that mask off for full for a full-time effect. He, you shouldn't have to. He, we should all play the game until we physically cannot do it anymore. <laughs> I, if Billy O'Connor needs a place to play, I got a team that will gladly have him. It's true. Do they need a catcher? They do. Well. Dom Magliaca, Dylan Baker, Evan Applewick do up in the bottom half of the third. Hoskins has faced the minimum. Dom Magliaca, not an everyday starter for Miami. But getting the start here today, and he's first pitch swinging as he chops one out to Hammond. Throw across the diamond in time. One pitch, one out here in the bottom half of the third. Yeah, he's been efficient here through the first two and a third innings of his outing. Just 23 pitches, make it 22 pitches, 13 for strikes. So we'll see Dylan Baker step in. Baker batting 212, his 20th start on the season. First pitch called strike on the outside, half of the plate. Oh, one's the count to the starting second baseman. Baker OPS under 700, 670. He takes the 0-1 on the outside, 1-1. One one. He's got a hit in three of his last four starts. Dating back to two weekends ago. And Hoskins coming right back out. And he's just pepper in the zone. And that's his MO. You mentioned it. Nine walks on the season. Throws a lot of strikes. The lanky right hander. Hoskins kicks deals. Off speed. Baker just able to stay alive, getting it off the end of his bat. Hoskins has had two walks in each of his last two outings and in three of his. Last five, four of his last six, but in four of his outings this year, he's been spotless. Popped up into no man's land out there in left field and moving to his left is Walker. He'll have it for the second out. A little easier to see the ball now, I think, than it was earlier today when you're fighting the clouds. and It was a dark and dreary day when we started the Wright State and Cincinnati game. It wasn't necessarily raining hard. There was a sprinkle here and there, but... By the time the game really got going, no precipitation, just a lot of dark clouds. And the sun finally beating through the clouds for this second game of the doubleheader. It's never, the sun always shines on the Muskies and the Red Hawks. As Evan Applewick steps up to the plate, Applewick struggles at times at 
at the dish, batting 194, but he's getting on base 40% of the time. 25 walks and 100 plate appearances. He leads the team. Hoskins on the 2-1. Fouled back, having Applewick staying alive. Applewick strikes out a fair bit too. So of his 100 plate appearances this year, he has only put the ball in play about half the time. The 2-2. Two -two. Chopped out to the shortstop, Hausinger. He's working to his left, throws across the diamond. And it's a 1-2-3, bottom half of the third. And boy, does Hoskins look sharp. We head to the fourth here in Oxford. 1-0 on the scoreboard. Top of the fourth here in Oxford, Ohio. 6.42 on the clock. This game got started at 5.55. Five, six, seven, due up for the Musketeers. Matt McCormick, Carter Hendrickson, and Garrett Schultz. Chicago Cubs and the Cincinnati Reds just getting underway down there. Great American ballpark, which means my attention's going to be a little, a little staggered at times. <laughs> Reed, what happens if this game gets done in a speedy fashion? Are you racing down there for the sixth through ninth innings? Paul, no. The answer to that question is no. But you know me decently well. Yeah. Does it surprise you at all that on more than one occasion I've gone down to Great American Ballpark by myself for an entire series, all three games? No, I would do that. Yeah, I've done that yeah. multiple times. I would do that. Sat no problem my, doing sat that. Sat by myself. For three straight games. You going tomorrow? I know you're going tomorrow. Why did I even ask that question? During work hours. So ah. I got to talk to the boss. Lefty on lefty off the cap of the bat, and that's a base knock to center field. Shifted to the right side of the field, and Dylan Baker fully extends himself but can't get there in time. And it's one pitch and a single from Matt McCormick. We'll produce some live content somehow. We could justify that. Get you down there. 12.35. I think it's at like 11.30. Central. Ooh. Carter Hendrickson <laughs> at the plate. That always gets me with the Cubs. Yeah. Hendrickson struck out swinging his first time. Cormick out there at first. Not much of a stolen base threat. In fact, not, not a threat at all as he hasn't attempted one time this year. And I mentioned at the top of this broadcast, the Red Hawks had struggled this year with ones. The first inning have always been a bugaboo, at least here at home. And it's always been that first batter. It's been that first pitch of an at-bat. They just constantly have found themselves trailing their opponents as they do right here. Lead off base runner, and Carter Hendrickson at the plate. Preisel comes set, looking for a ground ball, the 2-1 offering. Breaking ball. Missed on the inside. The trackman here at the ballpark had another opinion. Three and one's the count. Good hitters count here for Hendrickson. 
Swung on and missed way out in front of the off speed from the south ball. And here comes the payoff pitch. Popped up and a shallow right field. Dylan Baker with his feet on the dirt cut out of the turf. Puts the squeeze on for the first out. So after the leadoff base hit, get a pop up in the infield. And now we'll see Garrett Schultz. Yeah, also an opportunity for a ground ball double play. Is the infield pop-up the most deflating feeling as a hitter? I think it has to be, especially with a runner on first where you know you're not really going anywhere. Nothing's happening there. No progress being made. Prasel's first pitch to Schultz in there for a called strike. 85 on the gun. Schultz singled his last time. First ball, first base hit of the ball game. Cormick staying close to home. Schultz comes around on that 0-1, 0-2. Nice crowd here on this Tuesday evening. I was just going to say that. Chopped out to... Evan Applewick who has to go across the diamond and not in time to beat Garrett Schultz. A weird play that it was popped up. It looked as though Connor Prazel might have had a play on it, but he had to backtrack. Deflected for Evan Applewick who has come racing across the infield and just couldn't get the strike over to Parker Lester in time. So put runners on first and second after the infield single. Yeah, there were... Three different Red Hawks over there, whether it be Priceall off the mound or Weiss or Applewick, everybody converging on that ball. And really, we talk about no man's land out beyond the first baseman and the third baseman. That was no man's land in between the pitcher, the third baseman, and the shortstop. So in steps Garrett, Jarrett Cushing. Cushing on the season, batting 257, 20 RBIs. And he singles out to left field. McCormick coming into third. He'll get the stop sign as the throw from Brian Zapp out in left field comes in to Evan Applewick. And the bases are juiced for Luke Hammond. So Brazel comes out, gives up three singles in his first clean inning on the rubber. And he would love to get a ground ball here. Corners coming in. Looks like their play's at the plate. At least for Parker Lester, the first baseman. Evan Applewake will likely be taking the ball wherever it is hit. Hammond. Singles out to left field. Getting the hold out at third base is Garrett Schultz, and that'll just plate one run. But the fourth hit of the inning gives Xavier a 2 nothing lead. Yeah, no reason out there to send Garrett Schultz in a one-out situation where you're seeing the ball very well, and that's now four of five batters to come to the plate in this inning that have just singled. Not crushing the baseball, just doing their job. So back to the top half of the order, and Jack Halsinger, who has choked up on the bat quite significantly, he struck out his last time, walked his first time. Just not seeing the ball very well. 17 RBIs on the ledger this season. Awaits the 1-0. Pops it out down the left field line. Brian Zapp's giving chase. Will he run out of room? He does as it fouls on top of the Jay Hayden Baseball Center. And to one and one. Nice, favorable, lefty-on-lefty lefty matchup. Three left-handers in this starting lineup for Xavier. And Hausinger flares one out into shallow right field. Dylan Baker back to make the grab. 
They see if they try the sacrifice fly. Schultz shows it before retreating back to the bag. And Dylan Baker makes a nice grab, and Connor Prazel and the Miami Redhawks get their second out on a pop-up to the second baseman. Yeah, Housinger frustrated. He's still without a hit since last Friday. Did not have a hit on Saturday or Sunday this weekend, and now today 0 for 2 with that walk. But he does have the run scored. It was the first run that Xavier did score today. And we'll see if the day is done for Prizel or – they're going to leave him in here. There has been a right-hander warming for Miami for quite a while. It looks like they're talking to Connor Prizel to just give instruction, and might be well warranted as Matthew Dupre is the hottest hitter in this Musketeer lineup. You're yeah. looking at his game log, three hits against Ohio State, three hits against Wright State, and then multiple multi-hit games from against Northern Illinois, and that talk was out in out on the bullpen was all just to give time for the new reliever as Connor Prazel is going to traipse his way off the mound and into the third base dugout. Two nothings our score, and there's two away as we'll see a new arm when we come back from break. You're watching Love and Honor Live. Welcome back to McKee Field at Hayden Park where there's still fans ushering themselves into the stands on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon. All to watch the Joe Nuxall Classic. This is the second game in the doubleheader. Wright State and UC played in a back and forth seesaw affair. And now we're in the top of the fourth and my oh my, Martin Sosna is in a tough situation. Base is juiced, two away and he's Got the task of getting out the hottest bat in Xavier's lineup, Matthew Dupre. Yeah, Dupre is batting in the two-hole for a reason. He's hitting 308 on the season. That's tied for the second best on the team coming into the game. Already with a double and a sack bunt today. Doubled his last time around. Boy, would he like to do that again. Clear these bases. So here we go. Martin Sozna. This is his 12th appearance on the season. 4.42 ERA. 18 and a third innings pitched. First pitch to Dupre. 82 miles an hour. Finds the strike zone. 0-1's the count. Six hits already in the ball game for Xavier. Looking for number seven here in this crucial part at the early onset of this game. Yeah, they're on the verge of trying to break it open, but this is a very critical part of the game for Miami. Not to dig themselves into an early hole. And Sozna will run one in and hit Dupre, which will make it a 3-0 ball game. And we'll see Andrew Walker come to the plate. So they bring in the righty to face the right-handed hitting Dupre. And now it's a righty on lefty matchup. Sozna's 12th appearance, we mentioned that. He leads the team now in appearances, so he's an arm they consistently go to. A junior from Chicago. 3-0 our score as Garrett Schultz scores. Cushing goes to third, Hammond moves to second, and now Dupre is out at first base. And just as he did the last batter, Sosna gets ahead. 
of Andrew Walker. Lined into center field and backing up is Magliaca. Two runs will score on the base hits from Andrew Walker. Sent it right back where it came from. And Xavier beginning to bust the door open as it is five to nothing in the top of the fourth. Yeah, four of the first five batters to come to the plate in this inning have scored. This is the ninth batter of the inning for Xavier, Tyler DiMartino. A lot of this damage happening with two outs. Jared Cushing, Luke Hammond both scoring, so a great job by the bottom half of the order all coming around and scoring. And we'll see Tyler DeMartino. To pray out at second, Walker at first, and the 1-0 is popped over towards the grandstand over the first base dugout. Out of play. Martino, the ninth batter to come up this inning. And Paul Fritchner's baseball minds. Is that batting around or do you need a 10 up? I have always said that that is batting around. And it won't matter as De Martino hits one down the left field line. That's extra bases. Getting the hold at third is Dupre, or rather Andrew Walker, as Dupre has already scored on the double from the designated hitter. It's now six to nothing as Miami brings in a relief pitcher and the Muskies have hammered them. Yeah, Carson Byers was pitching well to start this game, but now here in the top of the fourth, Xavier has broken it open. It is six nothing, and they aren't doing too much with it. They're just knocking the ball around the field. So Matt McCormick, who got this inning going on that capper of a single that bled through the infield now comes up with two runners in scoring position as the Muskies are bloodthirsty right now. 6 nothing the score as McCormick falls in an 0-2 well. Sozna still working with pace out on the rubber. Kicks, steals. Gets McCormick to wave, able to get a piece of the ball as we'll stay right here at 0-2. Sozna kicks, steals, breaking ball, doesn't come back around, missing on the outside. So Sozna has came in, hit by pitch, a single from Andrew Walker, and then the double by DeMartino. And McCormick keeps it rolling, singling out to center field. Two runs will score in the form of Andrew Walker and DeMartino. It's now 8 nothing as the Muskies have put a Mickey Mantle on the board. Seven runs in this fourth inning. And this Xavier team keeping the ball rolling as they're looking for their seventh straight win. Yeah, again, this is a situation where Xavier, I mean, just one extra base hit in this inning. The DiMartino double, otherwise, it's hits all over the place. Called strike to Hendrickson. He popped up in the infield. After that leadoff base hit from McCormick. Looking to try and not make two outs in the same inning. But he finds himself 0-2. Sozna has got ahead of batters, but has been unable to put him away as the breaking ball squirts away from David Novak. McCormick will move up to second base on the wild pitch. One, two. And 
game. Gets a wave from Carter Hendrickson as this inning mercifully ends. Seven runs come around to score in the top half of the fourth inning. Eight nothing as we head to the bottom half here on Love and Honor Live. McKee Field at Hayden Park is the venue. Ain't nothing's the score. I'm Reed Mouse joined along here with Paul Fritchner. And we got Casey McAllister tickling the keys, switching the cameras, doing it all on this production of Love and Honor Live on Chatterbox Sports. If you're new here, please go ahead, subscribe. If you haven't already, go ahead, like that stream. It helps reach a new audience. Not that we don't like this audience. We love you guys. But go ahead and take a gander around our channel, see if there's anything else you like. Off the bench with Tom Brenneman is 10 to noon, Monday through Friday. I already mentioned two of the main characters on that cast, Paul Fritschner and Casey McAllister. Brian Zapp leading off for the Miami Red Hawks, who will be facing off against Hoskins. Hoskins, which the lead has been buried here by that seven-run fourth inning. Has yet to surrender a hit to Miami. It's always interesting to see how a pitcher responds from a long layoff like mm -hmm. that. Sitting in the dugout for about 15 minutes. And with this Xavier lineup, you get used to it. Three ones the count. Hoskins has allowed just one base runner when he plunked Ryland Zaborowski. Zap fouls it back towards the first base dugout. The count is now full. 73 degrees was the temperature at first pitch of this one. You cannot ask for better weather on April 4th as Brian Zap sends one for a ride out to center field, but running out of room as Garrett Schultz backs his way to the warning track for the first out. That... Felt like it was hit a ton, and it barely got to the warning track out there in right center off the bat. You thought that was way gone, and it was an easy one for Schultz to track down. At Hayden Field, that ball's probably gone. At Hayden <laughs> Park, that's an F8. That's exactly right. Cooper Weiss steps up, grounded out to Jared Cushing his first time. Chops the 1 0 offering. 1 and 1's the count. Cooper Weiss starting shortstop today, batting 277 from Fort Myers, Florida. And there's the first base hit of the ball game for Miami. Extra bases as it rattles up against the right center field wall. And Cooper Weiss with a one out double. If you're Miami, just Plenty of time to chip away at this through the rest of the game. We got to start somewhere, and a nice one out double here in the fourth is one way to do it, especially from around the top of the order. And just went with the 90 mile an hour fastball on the outside, sent it out to right center field. Cooper Weiss, not afraid to use the whole ball field. David Novak steps in. Like I mentioned he's a big part or a big piece, I should say, of Miami if they want to turn this season around. First team in the conference last year struggled, batting in the 150s through the first month of the season, but has battled it all the way back. 
Bat 274. He's worked his way up the lineup. One and one's the count to the starting catcher. Check swing. They said he did go. Count is now one and two. Did not even appeal that. No. Wyckoff behind the plate made the call himself. Hoskins on the one two. Kicks. Deals. Fastball. Rides up and in. Two and two. Strikeout on the foul tip. That was secured by Dupre. And Ryland Zaborowski steps up with a runner on second base and two away. Three strikeouts now in the game for Luke Hoskins. Up to 46 pitches. Zaborowski first pitch swinging. Barrels a ball up towards his own dugout. Zaborowski, a native of Arizona. Formerly at Grand Canyon College. Go, go Lopes, right? Lopes up. Tall third baseman. Getting the start as the designated hitter today. Six foot six. He'd post you up. He will, big time. No doubt about it. One one's the count. I know you could score 10 points on him, though, Reed. It's never happened before. I would need a Danny DeVito kind of character <laughs> to get 10 points. <laughs> one and two's the count. Hoskins comes set. Weiss dancing out there at second base, and Zaborowski checks swings in foul territory. McCormick coming in, calls off. To pray and has it for the third out. Miami gets their first hit of the ball game, but they leave him stranded out at second base. Eight nothing our score here in Oxford. Top of the fifth inning here in Oxford. Ain't nothing our score, and we got a new arm to tell you about. It's a six-foot-six right-handed pitcher. The redshirt sophomore from Munster, Indiana. Costa Saronis. He'll be facing off against Garrett Schultz, Jared Cushing, and Luke Hammond. Hey, Reed, stop me if you've heard this before. He's a transfer from Indiana. Mm. Not quite a Hoosier Muskie. He's not. He is a Hoosier Red Hawk. Not quite the perfect ball player. <laughs> but Saronis, this will be his fifth appearance on the year. Has thrown five innings. Has given up 13 earned runs. Has struck out seven. Mark that eight. And has walked a total number of 12 batters. 12 walks and five innings pitched. Saronis, 23.40 ERA on the year. I mentioned the winner of this one will go on to play Wright State. Loser will get to play against UC in the second edition of the Joe Nuxall Classic. Saronis, 
First time pitching at home this year. Has gotten three innings against Southwest Ohio teams. Threw one inning against Cincinnati in front of that huge crowd at the beginning of March. That win that Miami got over the Bearcats. Came back one week later against the Dayton Flyers through two innings. Haven't seen him since. Been almost a month since the last time we've seen Saronis. As the 1-1 finds the strike zone. And what an atmosphere that was on March 1st oh, in yeah. Cincinnati. Largest crowd in UC Baseball Stadium history. Oh, oh, oh no. As Saronis rides up and in, and they got Garrett Schultz. How is it 93 miles an hour? And they're going to look at him, and it's we're going to step away here. It's the top of the fifth inning here on Love and Honor Live. And we're back here in Oxford, and Garrett Schultz did walk off the field. They were, he was bleeding, but he was able to walk off the field on his own two legs. So. Yeah, it looked like uh, we were trying to hold the towel up right around his nose. But they had pretty much his whole face covered with the towel, so it was hard to tell whether he got hit in the nose and it was a nosebleed, if they were trying to cover up something else where he got hit on the face. Um, Costa Saronis is now going to have to try and pitch after that. Yeah, that's tough for everyone involved. But Muskies will have a runner on first base. We'll see who they opt to come into the game for Garrett Schultz. Schultz has been playing really well for Xavier. Center fielder, somebody that Xavier pretty much relies on out there in center. I'm talking about somebody who's been on base multiple times now in the last couple of games. Home run on Saturday. Hayden Field against Mac opponent, Northern Illinois. Really trusty performer there out of the seven spot, hitting 240 on the season. He only missed one game so far this year. Started in 26 of the 28 coming into, t into today. But everybody here at McKee Field still taking a look down there. Garrett Schultz getting looked at in the Musketeer dugout. Saronis. And 
getting some warm up pitches and we mentioned it. It's it's a tough situation for everyone. Get back on the bump. You you go to play, you don't wanna you never want this situation to arise. Now it's gonna be Alex Hellman who is the pinch runner. So Hellman will be at first base and Cushing will step in. Serona's throwing a few more warm up pitches. Hellman will likely just slot in there in center field. Hellman's a senior. Yeah, he's Xavier trainer Nate Hoffmeyer down there. Still looking at Garrett Schultz. The umpire's going back to take their positions, but you can still hear a pin drop here at McKee Field. Nobody has made a sound in the last five to ten minutes. So we'll see Jared Cushing step in. You mentioned Hellman, senior, previously at Arizona State. There's a bit of pedigree out there. Gets a large lead against Saronis. And play has resumed as Saronis finds the strike zone with a 92 mile an hour fastball. Saronis checks on the runner. Nobody away here. That was the first batter of the inning. Popped foul. Parker Lester giving chase, running out of room as it goes into the bullpen down the first baseline. 0-2 the count to Cushing. He singled his last time, came around to score. Again, that was the pitch that Schultz got hit by. That was a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Mentioned the first time that Saronis has thrown in nearly a month. The 0-2. Breaking ball. Couldn't get on top of it. It's slider. That misses up. Cushing one for two on the day. Grounded out, struck out. Grounded out and singled and struck out, rather. As the one two is popped into right center field. Zach McDonald's underneath that puts the squeeze on for the first out. So one away. Paul, the Muskies home this weekend? Musketeers are home this weekend. They'll be at home Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday at 3 o'clock. I'll be on the call on that one. Then Friday at 1 o'clock before a Saturday 1 o'clock game as well. Mike Schmaltz will have you covered Friday and Saturday. Schmaltzy. Red Hawks travel up to Michigan to play Eastern Michigan. Next week, or this weekend rather. We're on the road for the next two weeks. As this is going to be chopped out. Nice play there by the second baseman, Dylan Baker. Not catching it on the fly as he could have. But instead, letting it bounce one. Steps on the bag, then throws across to first for the double play. Heads up play by Dylan Baker. Get the Red Hawks out of the inning. Still 8 nothing as we head to the bottom half of the fifth.
Welcome back here. Bottom of the fifth inning. Luke Hoskins back out for another inning of working. Boy, oh boy, has he been sharp for Xavier. One hit given up. That was the double last inning from Cooper Weiss. He'll face off against Parker Lester, Zach McDonald, and Dom Magliaca. Yeah, you're right. He has been uh, pretty efficient, I would say, mm -hmm. because he's at this point only thrown 50 pitches. He threw 85 against Cal Poly. We don't have the pitch count for his game against Ohio State, but that was his longest outing of the season. He threw seven innings, and they were scoreless innings. Did allow seven hits, but did not allow a run. Parker Lester takes the breaking ball from Hoskins. Lester grounded into a double play his first time. And he'll have a base hit to the left side of the field over the the glove of Hammond. And a leadoff base runner for the Red Hawks here in the fifth. The second time in the first five innings of this game that they've had a leadoff base runner. Zamborowski was hit by a pitch in the second. Changes the dynamic of the inning when you are able to put the first batter on base. Now we'll see Zach McDonald, who has been slumping as of late. I'd like to get some offense going. Still has an OPS over one this year. Slugging 576 home runs, 11 doubles. Well, I mentioned it, 2 for 21 coming into this game over the last two weeks. The 0-2 to McDonald. Taken on the outside, 90 miles an hour. Misses, 1-2 is the count. Hoskins comes set, kicks, deals off the end of the bat of McDonald, but just strong enough to get into the outfield for a single. Back-to-back -back base hits have the Red Hawks threatening here in the bottom of the fifth inning, and Parker Lester coming up a bit limp out there at second. And Jared Cushing at second base. He was kind of pinched there for a double play. Otherwise, it could have been a 4-6-3 double play, but... Now you have a potential injury with Parker Lester, like you said, Reed. Yeah, McDonald taking the adage of well-placed over well-hit. It's the tried and true adage of this game. Hit it where they ain't. And that's what McDonald did. And we'll see Dom Magliaca do up as they tend to Parker Lester. Lester, we mentioned, coming up a bit limp out there at second base. Though he is a first baseman, his legs are a big part of his game, and we're seeing Garrett Schultz walk around the grandstand out here at McKee Field. Not going to lie, looks pretty cool as the, <laughs> the blood's rushing from his nose. Wearing it like a battle wound, because that's what that is. Paul, I'm not afraid to tell a story or two. Sure. If I if I got hit in the nose, I think in the short seven months that we've been working together, you'd hear that story about 18 times. Oh, well, there's no doubt. Called strike to Magliaca. He grounded out to Hammond his first time around. Magliaca, not an everyday starter. Getting his fifth start of the season, batting 176. Just three hits on the season. Most recently coming against Oakland last weekend. One and one's the count. Magliaca sends one for a ride, but about 200 feet foul. One and two's the count. Not the first time we've seen a hitter in this ball game be way out in front. See what Hoskins comes back with on the one two. Runners on first and second, nobody away. Liner one hops and gets by Housinger's glove. Housinger almost frozen solid by the line drive. Didn't work backwards, didn't work towards the ball. 
and took a bad hop off the turf. That skips into the outfield and will load the bases for Miami's Dylan Baker. Well, that's huge. That could have been a double play, but instead, and they're going to give him an error on that play. Those are the kind of plays as a shortstop you just never practice. It's hard to simulate that exact ball, a line drive that bounces two feet in front of you. You can come up and dive and make the play, but if you don't get it, you're risking something worse than what even happened. So you just are frozen in time, and the one hop just ricochets off the glove. So Baker, one and one's the count. Baker with 13 RBIs this year. He has left the yard three times, most recently against Oakland. Skied into left center field, moving over into the left center field gap. Is the replacement from Schultz, and Miami will have their first run of the ball game as Parker Lester still moving slowly will be plated to make it an 8-1 ball game. Heilman with the catch. And Dylan Baker with the sacrifice fly for the first out. Evan Applewick at the plate. We talked last time Applewick was up about how He's not afraid to work a great at bat as this gets in on Housinger once again, fields it off his breastplate, throws it across the diamond and not in time as the bases will be juiced for Brian Zepp. Yeah, that's a couple of plays that Housinger would tell you he'd normally have. Those back-to-back -back errors for Housinger, very rare. And now we're going to have a conversation on the mound as we should be out of this inning. And yeah, the more you... You get around this game, the more you realize airs come in couples. And after you make a misplay, as Housinger does, ball finds you once again. And the bases are loaded for the top half of Miami's lineup. So if Miami wants to make a run at this thing, you got to do it here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Yeah, you never know how many chances you have in a game like this with the bases loaded, less than two outs. Anything into the outfield here scores a run. Brian Zapp comes up to the plate with the bases loaded. Zapp, 0 for 2. Takes the first pitch from Hoskins for a called strike. Hoskins comes set, kicks, deals. Miss it upstairs. One and one is the count to the starting left fielder. Zapp had four RBIs against Northern Illinois back on March 17th, a game where he had a home run. That was a three-run shot. Chops it out to the second baseman, Cushing. Flip over to Housinger. He holds on to it, so played another run on the fielder's choice. And there will be runners on the corner for Cooper Weiss. Eight to two now our score in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Yeah, slowly but surely, Miami doing what they can here to chip away. Scratch and claw your way. You don't have to do it. All in one inning, but you got to hang a crooked number when you get your opportunities, and this has been an opportunity for Miami. They'd like to see at least one more run be played in here in the bottom half of the fifth. Well, don't mean to cut you off there, Reed, but Hoskins had thrown 50 pitches coming into this inning. He's now thrown 17 in this inning alone. One owes the count. Hoskins goes to the breaking ball to get strike number one. Two away, runners on the corners. Zach McDonald was plated. Magliak is at third. And Zap is at first.
Two and one's the count to the starting shortstop, and he's got a great hitter's count as Hoskins misses again. It's three and one on the 89 mile an hour fastball in the turf. Hoskins comes set. Rides in, finds the strike zone just on the edge. Count is full, so on the pitch, Zap will be moving. Ball in the gap will score two. The payoff pitch to Weiss. Hit hard out to Hausinger. Gets it on the one hop. The throw over to McCormick is in time. Miami plates two runs here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. We head to any number six on Love and Honor Live. Eight to two, our score here in inning number six. Taking you along for the ride for the next two innings. This is my main man, Paul Fritschner. Paul? Thank you very much, Reed. Six and seventh innings on deck here, and the Musketeers have an eight to two lead, courtesy of a seven spot in the fourth for the Musketeers. Game was paused for quite a while as Garrett Schultz was hit in the face with a fastball, the 93 mile an hour variety from Costa Saronis. Garrett Schultz stayed down on the turf for a little while before being helped off. He did walk off the field under his own power, and then we just saw a few minutes ago, he walked along the concourse up here, along the sidewalk, and assuming he left to get some more medical attention, but he was walking along okay, still holding the towel up, still looked like he was Bleeding from his nose or somewhere up around there. The lineup back to the top now for Jack Housinger. Still looking for his first hit since Friday. Did not have a hit over the weekend on Saturday or Sunday. Oh for 2 today with a walk, but the game's first run... Stole second, or rather got to second on the sack punt from Dupre. Stole third, and then scored on the sack fly. 2-0 incoming. It's up and in. Three balls and no strikes. And a 3-0 finds the zone from the tall righty. Dupre waiting in the on-deck circle. Then it'll be Walker, Martino, or DiMartino, rather, if the inning gets there. And an easy take for Housinger. The leadoff man is aboard to begin this sixth inning. And no one needed it more than Housinger right there. Shaky, shaky in the field, last half inning. Nothing more you want to come than step up to the plate, get a hit, get on base, help your team out. And he does just that, leadoff walk. Xavier's had the leadoff man aboard now in four of the game's six innings. Sorona starts off to pray with a strike. Musketeer catcher. Bunted Housinger over to second, first time up, then a double into the right center gap in the third inning. Four being hit by a pitch and scoring in the fourth. 
Line drive right back up the middle. That'll get through. Housinger just stays at second. And there are two on to lead off this sixth inning. Red Hawks having some trouble just getting outs. Dupre's approach at the plate has just been miraculous this game. Another great job. Productive in every at-bat. Sacrifice bunt in the first inning. The double in the third. Hit by a pitch in the fourth. Comes around and scores. And now get a single for a second hit of the ball game. Dupre just continuously being a tough out for everyone he faces. Yeah, and you look back to Sunday. He walked three times. Had a sack fly to score a run in that game. On Saturday, a double and a single scored a run. Did not strike out, put good contact on the ball. He has been locked in at the plate. And Miami is going to take Costa Saronis out of the game. They will go to their fifth pitcher. And we'll talk about him after this break on Love and Honor Live. Top of the sixth inning, Andrew Walker will be the first batter to face Luke Ross. Left-hander coming on out of the bullpen. The freshman, another product of IMG Academy that we've seen today. We saw one of those earlier in the Wright State Cincinnati game, and now we see an IMG product here in this one. Luke Ross again, the freshman, 6'2", 200 pounds, Wisconsin native. This is his fifth appearance of the season and he has only thrown one scoreless appearance that was an inning and a third against Wright State on March 22nd through 14 pitches and that one did not allow a hit or a run otherwise he's allowed multiple runs in three of the other four appearances yeah trying to earn more time on the bump mentioned it this is his fifth appearance sixth Six innings pitch. He's coming in with a 16.5 ERA. Just trying to earn a little more time out there. Trying to hang a zero. Musketeers up to 10 hits now after that Dupre single. Red Hawks two runs on three hits. Foul back on a ball in on the hands of Walker. DiMartino patiently waiting his chance. But rather, they're going to make a substitution. Connor Mish will come in for DiMartino. Musketeers designated hitters. Day is done. Got three at-bats, doubled and scored. Another look to second. Martino's got to be in the, the dugout like, hey, man, well, what else can I do here? When It's just getting Mish some at-bats. 8-2 ball game, non-conference. He head into conference play this weekend. Just looking to get some guys, some more ABs. Here's the L1. Yeah, that's exactly what you're trying to do here. Heading into your most important time of the season. Popped up foul out of play. Just important for Ross to retire the first batter he faces. I want to thank everybody watching on Chatterbox Sports. Make sure you leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have your Miami baseball and softball coverage here. 0-2, oh, 
Ball in the dirt, low and in. Paul Fritschner, Reed Mouse with you on the call of this game. And Casey McAllister over to our left on the production. The pitch, the runners go. This ball gets to the backstop, and both runners advance safely. Now both runners into scoring position, still with nobody out. What about that from Xavier? Comfortable lead, up 8-2, and still just swiping the backs, keeping the pressure on Miami, not taking it easy. And eliminate the double play, as now Ross has got to look for the K. Yeah, nobody out in the inning. The infield is coming in in case there is a play at the plate. Middle infield is okay to give that up, give up that run rather. 2-2. Two -two. Inside. That nearly hit Walker. Yeah, you saw Walker start to commit to that pitch, then had to dance quickly out of trouble. Here's the payoff. And it's grounded to third. Diving stop made by Applewick. Throw to first. And it gets Andrew Walk. No, they say he was off the bag. He's safe. That's a run anyway, but another base runner for Xavier. Yeah, Applewick makes an incredible grab. Extending himself on the turf. Pops up. Has to get rid of it quickly to get the speedy walker and pulls Parker Lester off the back, up the line. Connor Mish stepping to the plate now. Nine runs are in for Xavier. Matthew Dupre stayed at second base on the play. That was a hit for the Musketeers. And there's a strike to Mish. Freshman! Getting his first at bat of the day. Runners on first and second. Still nobody out. Mish rolling over the top of it. And what about that double steal now? Evan Applewick could have tagged third base on that play. They would have stayed put at first and second. Nice move by Xavier. A ball bouncing in the turf that gets away, and that takes away the force outs to pray up to third. Walker up to second. Still nobody out. Mish waiting. This one's down the right field line. If it stays fair, that's two runs, and it's fair. Both runs will score. Dupre and Walker standing up. The throw goes to second, and it's a pinch hit. Two RBI double to stretch the lead back to eight for Xavier. They get those two runs back that they surrendered in the bottom half of the fifth, and you add one on. It's 11-2 to two now. The third run in in the inning. That brings up Matt McCormick, and there is still nobody out. Connor Mish coming off the bench, plating two runs, getting in on the hit parade. 12 hits in the ball game for Xavier. They've been doing it from the onset, and 10 runs in the last three innings have just been pouring it on. McCormick today, he is two for three, a couple of singles and a run scored. Came to the plate twice in the fourth inning. The 0-1.
<laughs> now the 1-1. One, one. Lined into left. This will get down. Mish up 90 feet to third. McCormick on base with a single. Third straight time to the plate that Xavier has seen Matt McCormick record a hit. And Carter Hendrickson, who is 0 for 3 today, he is the only Xavier Musketeer in the starting lineup who has not scored yet today. Yeah, one up. I think he's the only one without a hit. No, Luke Hammond doesn't have one. Neither does Jack Housinger. But what about the day from McCormick? Three hits, just being tough up there. Ball player, Gamer. Gamer. This one bouncing in the turf. That will allow McCormick to get up to second on the wild pitch. Hammond does have a hit read. He's one for three. That's right. But Housinger, two walks, and still without a hit. His last three games. Two runs, though. That's, that's, yep. that's worth something there at the leadoff slot. Absolutely. Two walks to get on base. Nothing to complain about there. 2-0, up and in, and these Miami pitchers right now just plain and simply having trouble finding the zone. When they are, it's blasted into right center field for a two-run single. Here's the 3-0. That splits the plate. And up and away on the walk, and that is now the first six batters of the inning to come to the plate for Xavier. They have all reached, and I think we're going to see another pitching change here. Haven't seen a signal yet. Hasn't been a ton of action down there in the Miami bullpen. There has been a lefty throwing. But Luke Ross still yet to record an out. <laughs> out at any base here. Man, Miami just trying to get back in the dugout. You know, you get a little bit of life. Two runs in the bottom half of the fifth inning. We mentioned it, scratch and claw. Try to get back into the game. And here you give up at least three in the top of the six. And... It doesn't look like all Xavier's going to scratch across as they have the bases loaded and nobody away. First at bat for Alex Hellman. Came in as a pinch runner for Garrett Schultz who left with that injury. Hit in the face with a fastball. Did walk off and appeared to be relatively okay. Not to say he is okay. I'm sure he's very shaken up from that injury. Of course, he, he left the facility and went off to get looked at. Uh -huh. Ball and a strike. Lined into left center field. That'll play a couple more. One run is in. Coming around third to score is McCormick. The throw to the plate is not in time. Two more score on a two RBI single from Alex Hellman, and there is still nobody out in this inning. So Hellman now coming up, and he's coming off the bench, plating two runs with a base knock. 14 hits by Xavier in this one. Xavier leading by 11 with Jared Cushing to the plate. Second on the team in homers with seven on the season. Another run standing 90 feet away, and he fouls the first pitch to the backstop. <laughs> Xavier with a day off tomorrow before opening Big East play. So against the Butler Bulldogs. Appears to be going the same way that Last year's game went. 
Last time these two teams faced, Xavier won 17-2, plating seven runs in the ninth inning. Here's the 0-2 to Cushing. Gets to the backstop. Another run coming across the plate. It's now 14-2 on the wild pitch. Up to second goes Hellman. And you almost have to wonder how long you can stick with Luke Ross here. Still yet to record an out. He's thrown 25 pitches. There is a called strike, and there is the first out of this inning. The eighth batter of the inning to come to the plate. And Luke Hammond will step up. Runner on second base is Alex Hellman. Down the right field line, this one drifting, and it bounces foul. Yeah, just out no man's land. McDonald didn't get there in time, and a tough play for any infielder. Yeah, that bounced on the turf. Yeah. It bounced in play. It looked like Parker Lester might have gotten there just in time, but almost deferred for the right fielder, McDonald. Yeah, tough angle for the first baseman going out. That's a mm -hmm. better angle for the right fielder coming over, but then it just dropped to the turf. Now the 0-1. That's in the turf. Novak can't find it, and that allows Hellman to get over to third. Luke Hammond a single today. Grounded into a double play to end the fifth inning. Jack Housinger staying in the game. He's in the on-deck circle. 2-1. Seven runs in the fourth for Xavier. Six runs now here in this inning. Still just one out. And it's going to be the second time this ball game that they've batted around. Just in the last three innings. All right. Swing and a miss. Strike three, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Luke Ross. So after the first seven batters that came to the plate for Xavier all reached, now Luke Ross with back-to-back -back Ks, and that has to be in the mind of Jack Housinger, trying to break that slump. He's been on base twice, and he has scored both times he's been on. Going back to that 17-2 win Xavier last year. Housinger reached base four times, scored twice, scored three times rather. So having a similar ball game. Had a double last year against Miami. Hasn't done that yet. Still time. 2-0. Housinger crowding the plate. And he takes a fastball outside ball for his second walk of the inning. Down there at third base, Alex Hellman is the only Xavier player that has not scored yet in this game. And I think we're going to see a pitching change. We will. And we'll be back after this on Chatterbox Sports with the Miami Redhawks' sixth pitcher of the day.
Sixth pitcher of the day for Miami, and it comes here in the top of the sixth inning. The Musketeers have batted around again. Matthew Dupre will be at the plate. He is the 11th batter of the inning to come to the plate. Nick Vardavis is the new arm on the mound, the left-hander. Vardavis taking over from Luke Ross and Costa Saronis. Luke Ross through the first 10 batters of this inning. Yeah, Nick Vardavis coming in. This is his 12th appearance. 6.75 ERA. Looking to put an end to this inning and really just eat some innings up for Miami. Last saw Nick Vardavis last week when he went two and one third against Oakland. Good little outing from Vardavis. Didn't give up a single run. Looking to do that here. I only have one more slot in my scorebook for a Miami pitcher. I ran out a long time ago. Mm. I've just been. It's really chalked. Nice. Just cross it out and put Johnny Allstaff. <laughs> Matthew Dupre, two runs scored today. Swing and a miss at the first pitch here. Three straight times to the plate he's reached. A single, a hit by pitch, and a double. He's been a tough out every time. And Vardavis getting ahead, putting Dupre in a well. I'm going to get a couple more RBIs. Xavier's looking for the new high score in the inning. Here's the 0-2, and that hit him. Had him in an 0-2 hole, but that hit him, and that will load the bases. And Andrew Walker will come up now. Walker also singled and scored in this inning. Cool. That one outside, a ball and no strikes. I'll tell you what, fellas, this game was motoring along through the first four innings. Now we are over two hours. We're in the top of the sixth. Here's a first or a called strike rather to Andrew Walker. Going back to that game from a year ago, Walker had four RBIs in that 17-2 win over the Red Hawks. The piece together a better game here today. As he's already got four RBIs in this one. Yeah, and one swing of the bat could surpass that total. Bases loaded. Now the 2 1. That's a called strike. And the zone has opened up. <laughs> I was just about to say we have expanded the strike zone. Mercifully. Scott Wyckoff behind the plate, calling the balls and strikes. Understanding the situation at hand here. The 2 2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Xavier sends 12 men to the plate. They score six times. They now lead it 14 to two into the bottom of the sixth inning.
Nathan Stahl is on the mound, a right-hander for the Musketeers, taking over from Luke Hoskins, who finishes having thrown 72 pitches in this game. 46 of those were strikes. He threw five innings, allowed three hits, two runs, neither of which were earned, no walks, and three strikeouts. So, Reed, the Musketeers. Yeah, I'm gonna do Zab- the, from Xavier. I'm going to do the math here real quick. In this game so far, Musketeers have thrown 72 pitches. This is about to be 73 to David Novak. Miami has thrown 160 pitches Ah, in this game. The old Nolan Ryan. More than double, two and a half times the amount. Well, to be fair. Just about a time and a half. Xavier has scored well more than double the amount of runs that Miami has. There's a fastball on the outer half of the plate, two balls and a strike. And if you're wondering why Hoskins exited this game, part of the reason is it's, you know, like when a – a rain delay happens in major league games and a guy's cruising and they don't bring him back out after like the two hour rain delay. That's kind of what it's been like. They've Xavier's offense has created a pseudo rain delay scoring 13 runs in the past three innings. So they're going to get some more work out of stall. Fastball up and in. That is the first walk today for the Xavier pitching staff. Really, it's only the fifth combined walk for either team. Hasn't been the walks. It's been the hits. 17 combined hits in this game. 14 by one team. and Remember, Miami was hitless through the first three. Is that Cooper Weiss double back in the fourth inning? Not too long ago in terms of game, but in time, those things have not been a one-to-one comparison as that felt like a century ago. No, we haven't seen in this ball game yet, though. Home run. Haven't seen a home run today. 16 runs. We've seen, we saw what, 13 in the first game? Nothing has left the yard here at McKee Field. He was trying right there. If he had squared that one up, that might have gone a mile. You can see him frustrated. Ryland Zaborowski frustrated that he couldn't catch a hold of that. Thank you for tuning into this one. Mentioned it before. If you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like Miami sports. Get a notification when we go live. 2 2, low and away. And like the stream. If we get up to 50 likes, Paul Fritchner will buy you a personal gift card to either Bagel and Deli or Dana Gardens, determining who wins this ballgame. Wow. 3-2, 3-2, fouled down the third baseline. I've never been to Bagel and Deli. It's good. I could say we go after this game, but it might be closed. Don't think so at this rate. It might be closed. Maybe one time. There's a curtain ball outside. If you went to Bagel and Deli, would you get the Wally Zerbiak? The Big Ben? I think I may have been one time. I think maybe I made my way up to Oxford here with my girlfriend one time a couple years ago. Night out on the town? No, it was during the day. Was was that a going during the day kind of place? Yeah, you can go there. It's also open at 2 in the morning. It's just a little hole in the wall that you can get. Get a bagel. All right. Personal favorite of Reed when he was in college was the Afterburner. Came with a Marlboro cigarette. Nice. So I got this illustrious, deep speaking voice that I'm known for. That's what they say about Reed Mouse. <laughs> you tune into a broadcast, that's what many people say. Parker Lester to the plate. 
Just kidding. Steven Krause hitting for Parker Lester. It is Steven Krause. Captain on the team. Senior. Free swinger. He ain't going to walk very – he ain't going to walk a whole lot. Now the Musketeer is going to have a conversation. Matt to pray out to have a word with Nathan Stahl. I've heard great things for years about the Miami Bagels. They're great. Heard great things Truly. for Truly years. And just never been, or at least never eaten it that I know of. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Low and outside. Grew up right down the road in Hamilton, so made many a trips up here to Oxford. Uncle used to be the head baseball coach at Talawanda High School, so spent a lot of time around here. Ground ball foul past third. All the mainstays here in O-Town. <laughs> Dobies. What's it, DDS Pizza? SDS. Apologize to the Oxford natives. They've got this, uh, this Irish burger joint right off of Foxfire. McDonald's? Swing and a miss. I've heard of that one. Poppin' Place, 2 in the morning. The Mickey D's? Mickey D's. Speaking of which. You know what you were saying. Zach McDonald, single to run, scored the fifth. 14-2, Musketeers. Ground ball out to short, could be two. Housinger to second for one, throw it up first. Just barely not in time. Interesting play by Housinger. Opting to go to second base. His momentum was moving him to third. Hammond did a nice job at retreating back to the bag to get the force out at third, and they still get the out at second base, so it all worked out, but just an interesting play by Housing. And now two outs here in the sixth. Dom Maglioka. Fastball. Just barely missing. First game under the lights here on Love and Honor Live. Camera's picking it up well. It looks great. Happy to bring you this product. <laughs> Fastball running up and in. And Xavier back in action on Thursday. Down at Hayden Field on Victory Parkway. 2-1. Hit in the air, left field. This one is deep. Sending back Walker all the way to the wall. And he made the catch. Hard to see here from inside the press box through the glare. He made the catch. And that's out number three. <laughs> You know, that we're just at that point in the night, Reed. Yes, it is. We're into the seventh. It's 14-2, to two, Musketeers.
Top of the seventh inning here at McKee Field. Musketeers leading it 14 to two. And into the plate, it's Connor Mish with Matt McCormick and Carter Hendrickson due up in this inning. Musketeers have laid it on two of the last three innings. They put up at least six runs. Line drive out to second, and this is handled by Dylan Baker, but he throws it away into the Musketeer dugout. Yeah, he got the ground out to Baker. Trying to get that first out, and Baker had to work quickly, didn't field it cleanly, and just an errant throw. Blake Buzio now out at second base for Dylan Baker. So checking into the game, you know what they say, you come into the game, the ball will find you. Buzio looking for the ball to find him again so he can make good on after the air. First air of the game for Miami. And we have a pinch hitter, Teddy Dieters, to the plate. <laughs> Dieters in place of Matt McCormick, Musketeer first baseman. What a game for McCormick. Three for four, scored twice. Just tough out. And really, this saved your lineup. Just full of tough outs. This Miami team, they're not afraid to strike out batters. Second in the country in K per nine. But Xavier just refusing to go down on strikes. That one fouled away. Two two. Check swing. Did not go around. <laughs> Dieter is a sophomore. And a full count. And it's up and out. A walk. So the error and the walk to start this inning. And that's Carter Hendrickson stays in the game. He's still looking for his first hit. Yeah, Hendrickson, one of the only Musketeers that does not have a hit today. Waiting on the 1-0. Popped up, foul, back behind the plate. That'll get out of play. Nice night here in Oxford. Beautiful, gorgeous, beautiful night to go to Bagel Deli. <laughs> Catch you there after the game, Paul. After the game. One one. Swung on and missed. It was raining earlier today. Kind of started sprinkling around the start of the Cincinnati Wright State game. Combated thunderstorms this morning. Oh. Had a lot of rain over the past week. Just the spring showers coming and going. But beautiful evening. 1-2 breaks into the zone. A called strike three in the first out in the seventh. That's the f second strikeout for Vardavis. This one lined out to second. No play there for the second out, but Hellman is retired. Another great swing by Hellman. Really coming off the bench and had a hit his last time and pieced that ball out to second base. Just hit it right towards Buzio. No 
hitter. And another new hitter. Luis Pimentel Guerrero. Freshman from Burlington, Ontario. Pimentel Guerrero played for Team Canada in the 2019 Futures Games. A little bit of pedigree there. Swung on and missed. And it is a one and two count with two down. Top of the seventh inning. Xavier six runs in the last frame. Guerrero looking for his first hit of his collegiate career. Popped up into shallow right, coming in for it to make the catch as McDonald, and that ends the inning. So the Musketeers send five to the plate, leave a couple on base, and we'll head to the bottom of the seventh. Time to stretch here on Chatterbox Sports. We are back now for the <laughs> bottom of the seventh inning. 14 to two, Xavier in front. Connor Bailey to the mound and defensive adjustments all over the place for Xavier, which we'll get to in just a minute. Dylan Baker still hitting. Baker actually moved to shortstop as Blake Buzio went in for Cooper Weiss. The 0-1, a check swing, but he went around anyway, says the home plate umpire, Scott Wyckoff. No 2 breaking pitch up and out. Connor Bailey's a tall drink of water out there, six foot five from Medina. Lost Jesuit. Great baseball school. Jesuit school to Jesuit school. Flown foul. 
Baker, then Applewick. One, two. Comes inside. That hit him. Lead off base runner in the seventh. And if you guys were wondering, there is no mercy rule here in non-conference games. We're going nine. We're going the distance. The real question is, will this game or the Reds game that started 40 minutes after this game 45. And, and quicker? This game got a five-minute jump, 555 That's was right. first pitch. That's right. Of course, Chatterbox Reds coming up as soon as the Reds game is over right here on the Chatterbox Sports YouTube channel, assuming that this game is over by then. You can't go live from two different spots on the same YouTube channel. Nick Kirby, Trace Fowler patiently waiting for that one. The 0 one called strike two to Evan Applewick, who today, this is only his third at bat. Grounded out in the third inning to short. Hit over to short again in the fifth, but that was when Housinger committed the error. 0-2, swung on and missed. Strikeout for Connor Bailey. Pinch hitter here for Brian Zapp. It's Nate Stone. Stone, been in the program for a long time. Hurt last year. Trying to regain his spot back into the starting lineup, which he possessed a couple seasons ago. Brian Zapp hitting this one into straightaway center field. Hellman backing up, still going to the wall, makes the catch, and there's two down. And Nate Stone coming off the bench and drive one, driving one out to left center field, and that's just kind of the day that Miami's had. Even when they're hitting the ball well, just right at the Musketeers. As they've put a couple nice swings on the ball recently. And here's Blake Bazio hitting in place of Cooper Weiss. Pitch outside, it's 1-0. Bazio, another platoon player. Trying to earn time. That second base has been a revolving door at times. Dylan Baker, Evan Applewick, Bazio all... Occupying time out at second base as this Miami's team is still trying to find their identity. And these midweek games have been a nightmare for the Red Hawks. 1-1 one, one called for a strike. Now all of a sudden, Connor Bailey a strike away from sending this game to the eighth. 1-2. We talked a great deal about the SEC and how really they do it just way better when it comes to baseball, selling out stadiums. Ground ball out to third base, coming on for the charge to throw to first in time from Luke Hammond, and that ends the seventh. We'll pick up that thought where you left off because you're going to have the eighth, and we'll come back after this. Top of the eighth inning here in Oxford. 14-2 our score. 
Reed Mouse taking you through this eighth inning. Running along here with Paul Fritzner. It's been a fun day of baseball with you, Paul. Absolutely, Reed. Well, this game has gotten out of hand. And taking the rubber is a draft pick from a season ago, Tyler Chadwick. Chadwick, who has struggled this year, and that's been an understatement, was geared up to be the Friday starter for Miami. Was a 19th round selection by the Reds. Transferred into Miami and had a fantastic fall. And like I said, was part of the blueprint, the map for Miami's season, but just has been unable to find himself. But here getting some innings, at least getting one inning in the eighth against Xavier. Nine one two do up for Xavier. It's Luke Hammond facing off against the power arm of Tyler Chadwick. Hammond one for four at the plate today. Came around and scored. And it's 3-0, and that has been the M.O. for Tyler Chadwick this year. Has struggled to find the strike zone. Seventh appearance on the season. As the 3-0 finds the strike zone. 97 on the gun. And it's not even his top speed of the game. Hit 98 first pitch. There are MLB scouts in attendance here. Did Watch. that hit the light read? I don't know. I think it might have. The natural. Chadwick, six foot five, two hundred and twenty-five pounds. Last time we saw him was against Oakland. Fisted out to the second baseman, Blake Buzio. Fields it cleanly, flips it over to Steven Krause at first base. For the four to three put out. So we'll see a new hitter for Jack Housinger. Of course we will. Joe Car Carpiz. Carpiez. Apologize to the Carpiez family. One and one's the count. Chadwick with the 89 mile an hour breaking ball. Misses the zone. Carpiez, two at bats this season. True freshman from New York. How about coming off the bench to face 97? Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned Tyler Chadwick drafted in the 19th round. Transfer from Iowa Western Community College. Season before was with West Virginia as Chadwick gets the strikeout for the second out. Back in 2020 was a uh, Preseason All-American by perfect game in high school. That season that never was. This is Grant Stevenson hitting here, Reed. Yeah, Stevenson takes the 97-mile-an-hour fastball on the outside. This isn't what you signed up for when you come off the bench. No. And Chadwick's mowing him down. <laughs> as that's 0-2. <laughs> here it is. Try and hit it. 97 with the heat, 89 with the off speed. Kicks, steals, fastball right back, blown it by Stevenson, able to just get a piece of it. The 0-2 and the dirt. Stevenson, have we seen him this year? Yep. Here 
Yeah, 95 at bats. Everyday starter. Didn't get the start today. Nope. Junior. Been seeing the ball well. Three multi hit games in his last five starts. Had a hit against Northern Illinois the other week, but he goes down looking against Tyler Chadwick. So a sharp inning out of the pin from Tyler Chadwick as he walks off the mound, strikes out two. We head to the bottom of the eighth, 14 2, Paul, here in Oxford. Bottom of the eighth here at McKee Field at Hayden Park. 14 to our score. I'm Reed Mounts joining along here with Paul Fritschner. Miami trailing 12 runs and six outs to give. We mentioned no run rules here in non-conference games. Connor Bailey back toeing the rubber for Xavier. Tommy Harrison at the plate. True freshman from St. Ed's. Heading for Miami. Struggled at the plate this year, but still we're going to find a lot of success as physically he is looks the part of a collegiate ball player, and he'll get there. Seeing plenty of at-bats here in his freshman year. As he fouls one back. Harrison leading off in place of David Novak. So catcher replacing catcher. It's 2 2. Harrison awaits the 2 2 from Connor Bailey. Run it full. Ryland Zaborowski in the on-deck circle. So he hasn't exited the game. And Harrison will walk. Lead off walk here. Bottom half of the eighth. And we'll see Ryland Zaborowski. Zaborowski has reached the board twice. Has popped up in foul territory, walked, hit by pitch. Seeing the ball well recently. He's had a really nice season as a transfer here. Third school in his collegiate career. Talked about it earlier, how he went to Grand Canyon. The Antelopes. Paul's a big fan of their basketball program. <laughs> Lopes up. Zaborowski takes the 92-mile-an-hour fastball from Bailey. High. 2-0. Still some fans here. Good amount, too. Right. A nice crowd. Oh, to the point I was going to make earlier about the SEC. Yeah. Score is cut off as the count is 3-0. We're going to be seeing some big-time baseball here in the city of Cincinnati. Obviously, the Big East, one of the better northern conferences. In baseball. 
And now, University of Cincinnati's under Scott Guggins, they're going to be joining the Big 12. So we're going to be seeing some, some big-time teams coming into the Queen City. Going down, and I know these teams are all rivals, especially these two teams playing are rivals with Cincinnati. As Zabarowski singles down the left field line. Tommy Harrison holding up at second. Put runners on first and second and nobody away. But it's a big league ballpark down there at UC. McKee Field at Hayden Park, fantastic. Hayden Field for Xavier, great. Even Nishwood Stadium that Wright State plays at. It's a nice field, but UC is kind of in a tier of its own. As it looks like they're going to go out there and talk to Connor Bailey. Yeah, runners on first and second now. Still talking to Bailey out there. Miami's tying run well in the dugout. They're gonna have to hit around. They're gonna they're gonna need a lot of things to happen to a point where this game might not be going might be going to 11 p. <laughs> if we want to see a comeback. <laughs> We're getting to the part where the nightlife out there on Brick Street starting to liven up here on this Tuesday. Popped up in foul territory. If it isn't fair, it'd be an infield fly. But instead it goes out of play. And hits the press box here. I was worried about it coming down and hitting our camera this is a very real possibility so that hit off the top of the metal awning that holds up the net Steven Krause came off the bench and struck out his last time mention it captain voted on by his peers and the coaches Consistency is one of the reasons that he was selected. Shows up every day, works hard. Oh, two to Kraus. Bailey puts him down on strikes. First out here in the bottom half of the eighth. Miami played it two runs a couple innings ago. So when the sun was still shining, <laughs> been long gone. Moving out west. As Zach McDonald steps up. First pitch swinging. And fouls it straight back. McDonald singled. Was grounded into a fielder's choice his last two trips up. Came around and scored. Back in the fifth. Called strike on the breaking ball. Bailey's finding a groove. 0-2. Bailey hasn't been put in high leverage situations this season, trying to earn his spot. He's definitely got the stuff. As the tall right-handed pitcher misses upstairs, 1-2. Bailey getting the sign. Here's the 2-2. And gets McDonald to chase at the 92-mile-an-hour fastball at his eyes. Couldn't hold off. And we'll see Dom Magliaca. So the walk, then the hit to lead off this inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Two on, two away. Magliaca takes the first pitch. Slider running away.
Big East still plays their games, their tournament games out at Prasco Park, right? Mason. They do. Wednesday to Saturday this year, mm -hmm. Memorial Day weekend. How did Prasco Park become the hot spot? The location for the Big East tournament. It's the middle of the conference, really. Especially when you look at is it the farthest? Is Xavier the farthest south school? Mm. Is Georgetown farther south? Good question. It's they're pretty even, but if you look across Creighton out in the Midwest, Omaha, yeah, popped up in shallow right field, working over to the right. Xavier has it for the third and final out. So Miami strands two. We head to the ninth inning, fourteen to our score on Love and Honor Live here on Chatterbox Sports. Ninth inning here, 14 twos our score. Tyler Chadwick back out there, struck out two in the eighth. Reed Mouser along here with Paul Fritschner. I'll take it through the ninth inning. And we're going to see if Xavier can add on. One run in the first inning, then went quiet. Seven runs in the fourth. They added on with six more in the sixth. Miami, bunch of zeros on the board, then a two right there in the fifth inning. Yeah, we'll see if he can build off of what he did in the eighth. Yeah. Just throw those fastballs. A few draft prospects in this Miami pitching staff. Tyler Chadwick being one of them. Hudson Leach being another. You won't see Hudson Leach in the non-conference. Really good arm out of the pen. Xavier have any draft prospects? It's a good question. I uh, see any scouts around Hayden Field. I, I there have not been as many, or at least there wasn't this weekend. Um, sometimes you see him hanging around right there behind the plate. Kind of a concourse area, not too many stands immediately behind the plate. Got to step back 20, 30 feet from the wall before you get to the stands. Did Franzoni get drafted? He did, but he stopped playing. He didn't He didn't retired, continue. as they say. He played, I think, a little bit in the Angels organization and then decided to retire. He played just last year, right? Yep. So he, he played... Got drafted, played the, played the summer, and didn't come back. Yep. That's right. Fair enough. As Anderson walks to begin things here in the ninth. We're seeing Connor Misch. Chadwick. Delivers a 96-mile-an-hour heater over the heart of the plate. Misch found it over the first base dugout. Mish has come off the bench with a double. Reached a board on an air his last time. Tommy Harrison back there working with Chadwick. The 
We mentioned Chadwick having some woes this year, just gradually getting demoted from weekend starter to midweek starter. Now coming in, just getting some work, trying to build some confidence, and that's the main thing. We talked about David Novak and the first team all-max selection and how he had to get going if Miami wanted to have some success as the chopper out to Buzio is fielded cleanly, thrown on over to Steven Krause for the first out. Aiden Anderson moves up to second. But Chadwick is certainly a piece of the puzzle if Miami wants to make a run. Only four teams in the Mid-American Conference make, make the tournament. That's the Miami's, same as Xavier or with the Big East. Miami certainly has some work to do as they play the real the teeth of the MAC, Ball State, Kent State, two of the better teams. One out to Dieters. This is low. Two and zero is the count. Chadwick kicks, steals, singled up the middle, rounding third, headed for home is Anderson, and that's going to be an RBI for Dieters. 88-mile-an-hour slider, and Dieters sent it right back where it came from. Yeah, not trying to do too much. Single right up the middle. So we'll see Carter Hendrickson got the start today, 0 for 4. He's had the hat trick, struck out three times, walked, came around and scored back in the sixth inning. Last trip to the plate. Xavier now leading 15 to 2. Talked about that 17 2 win that they had last year in the Joe Nuxall Classic. Xavier plated seven runs in the ninth inning. I recall you said they play Butler this weekend. Yep. Butler typically a team near the top in, in the Big East? Not usually. They're under a new coaching staff this year. They have qualified recently for the Big East tournament. Xavier's been in the tournament for the past few years, correct? Yeah. So we mentioned the the couple prospects that Miami has. Professional Chadwick being one of them, Hudson Leach. And this program has turned out some prospects as this is a base hit down. The third baseline going to be extra bases. Round in third, heading for home as Dieters, and Hendrickson will retreat back to second base. It's an RBI double, 16-2 to two here in Oxford. And what about Hendrickson? Staying in the game. How about it? Keep battling. Keep battling. And somebody that hadn't had a hit stayed in, got his hit. RBI double. Drove in a run. Yeah, you talk about the Butler Bulldogs. I'm looking back here in my scorebook. From 2019, this is a scorebook I have that has games from all over the place. I have Ryan Pepio as a starting pitcher in that game. This is sent for a ride out to left center field, giving chase and running out of steam. As left fielder will have it, Nate Stone. For the second out, Alman just coming up short. Wasn't too long ago that Miami had a top 10 pick in Sam Bachman. Was selected ninth overall to our Casey McAllister's beloved Los Angeles Angels back in 2021. Our producer is just a diehard Angels fan. Grew up loving Mike Trout. 0-2 here to Pimentel Guerrero. Check swing, and they said Guerrero did go around, so Chadwick gets the strikeout after surrendering two runs 
here in the top half of the ninth inning. 16 to our score. We head to the final half inning here in Oxford. It's the Joe Knoxall Classic on Chatterbox Sports. Bottom of the ninth here in Oxford, 16 to our score. Reed Mouse along with Paul Fritchner. And we got a new arm to tell you about as it's Jack Niederinghaus coming in to slam the door shut on this Joe Nuxall Classic. Yeah, the final line for Connor Bailey, he threw two innings in tonight's game. Allowed one hit. One walk, three strikeouts, did not allow a run. Only faced nine batters one time through the order. First appearance here of the season for Niedringhaus. Niedringhaus from St. Louis, Missouri. I don't take kindly to them here in Cincinnati. His brother who plays lacrosse at Boston U. Athletic family. So Niedering House, Southpaw. Get things rolling here as the 88 mile an hour fastball finds the strike zone to Billy Kopicki. Kopicki coming off the bench. Makes a called strike. Back to back strikes out of the pen from Niedering House as he checks the pitch com. He's ready to roll. Working away from Kopicki. Good morning, good afternoon, good night to Billy Kopicki. One up, one down here in the bottom half of the ninth. Yeah. Three pitches. And Evan Applewick. Looking to reach base. Applewick. Takes the first pitch for a called strike. I think he's just throwing four straight fastballs. Yeah, nothing but it. Taken for a ball on the outside. Talked about this earlier. Applewick, a native of Madison, South Dakota. Population 6,000. Which makes it one of the bigger cities in all of South Dakota. One, two. Ball in the dirt. Just crossed the three hour mark of this game. Mm hmm. Previous game today, you see in Wright State, two hours and 48 minutes. Been a long day at the yard. As Applewick fouls it back. Applewick. 
Applewick. Awaits the 2 2. Swing and strikeout. Two K's out of the pen for Niedringhaus. This is his pitching debut, and he's looked sharp. Yeah, no doubt. Two strikeouts, good sequencing. And we'll see Nate Stone. Stone barreled up a ball his last time as the first pitch curve ball from Deidre House. Misses upstairs. Couldn't get on top of it. Two zero here to Stone. Greenhouse, one out away from finishing this game. Called strike to Stone. Stone, second at bat of the game. Batting 135 on the season. Five hits and just 38 at bats. Two ones to count. Called strike two. Down to the final strike of the afternoon. In the evening. 2-2. Two, two. This is downstairs. It don't matter. <laughs> afternoon, evening, it's all the same. It's Tuesday, Paul. Great point, Reed. Miami will take on Eastern Michigan this weekend. Up in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Xavier will take on the Butler Bulldogs. Called strike three, and Niederinghaus comes out of the pin and strikes out the side in his debut on the rubber. 16-2, our final out here in Oxford. Three hours, four minutes total time. Xavier scores one run in the first, seven in the fourth, six in the sixth, and two in the top of the ninth. Miami plates two runs in the fifth inning and zeros along the board. Xavier... Increases their record to 17 and 12. Miami falls to 7 and 23. But that does it from us out here in the Joe Nuxall Classic. Xavier will take on Wright State. Miami will take on UC in the next edition. Next time these guys come out. For Paul Frischer, Paul, I had a great day with you. That Absolutely, was, Reed. That was fantastic. That was great. Let's do it, it again great. sometime. Yeah, let's do it again. And Casey McAllister, the diehard Angels fan to my left. We bid you adieu from here in Oxford. Once again, 16-2, our final score. This has been Love and Honor Live on Chatterbox Sports.